Representation, our values to be in the data set are expressed in terms of colors. Different colors are given to the different values to be used. And this is used to, visual, to visualize distribution. And the heat map helps us to identify patterns within the data in the data set used to train the model in this to the laptop price to the car model. And before we use the heat map, we should always make sure that we import the C bone package in Python. And the seaborne package in Python is used in data visualization. The package in Python is used in data visualization. When the uh, say is there, and the seaborne package imported as CMS is the Python data visualization library, as I've told you earlier on, based on the matplotlib. And the matplotlib is also a package library in Python, and this lib is a cross platform, is a cross platform data visualization and platform plotting library. For Python and numerical extension NumPy. So NumPy is a numerical extension in the library for numerical extension in, in, in Python. And this is our heat map. And it shows the correlation between the variables that we are having in this. And in this case, in the enterprise predictor, we have the company, the product, the type name, the screen resolution, the CPU, the RAM, the memory, GPU to the laptop processing unit, we have the operating system, we have the weight, the laptop ID, the inches, and the price in euros. And as you can see, there is this line that goes diagonally from the top, uh, from the top left corner to the top, to the bottom left, right corner. And that shows the correlation between a variable on itself, like the company on itself, and it is always a one, as I'll show you when we on the correlation matrix future, which we have a date future. But then the heat map always shows different, gives different color to different correlation of that. And these correlations can either be negative or positive, but I don't want to go so much deep into that, as I'll explain that in which the correlation matrix. Uh, the heat map, it only shows you the Colors. This gives, gives different features and correlation colors. Like as you can see, we have a purple, we have a black, we have a red, we have an orange. We have some different colors that visualize the data distribution in this case of the heat map. And as I go further, we have the correlation matrix as I've been talking about. And you have to notice that the heat map always comes from the correlation matrix, or from the correlation matrix. And the correlation matrix is a table containing of correlation coefficients between variables in a data set. And this is most of the time used to produce or visualize data. Using the heat map, you see it always visualizes data using the heat map. So it is always, okay, they always produce each other. Either heat map produces a correlation matrix or the correlation matrix produces a heat map. But both of them visualize data. And which is explained previously in slide two, as I told you, it's just to just explain the heat map. And each cell in the table represents the correlation between the variables. As I've explained to you in the, in the heat map, and this is a powerful tool used to summarize a large data set, identify and visualize patterns in a given data. And this below is the correlation matrix in form of a table in tabular form. And as you can see, price is a one, you have the CPU is a 0 0.5, we have the GPU is a 0 0.4, we have the square operation. Okay, you can see that this one, uh, different data is visualized in either positive or negative. You're seeing we have the positives and the type name, uh, the RAM, they are negative. So they, uh, they have negative correlation between each other. And as I move further, we have the uh, correlation matrix visualized in this form. It can also visualize, visualize in this form. Whereby you see those ones that run from, as I told you, the other side, the heat map wasn't visualizing these, 
screens be that, but then the correction map is, is different from a heat map in such a way that it visualizes the numeric color, put numeric in these. It doesn't put on only color, but it also puts numeric. As you can see, the one is like gold. You can see the first one shows the correlation between the company and the company. The second one shows the correlation between the product and the product. The third, the third one shows the correlation between the type name and the type name, like that. Till you reach on the price in euros and price in euros. Then you have negative correlations, as you can see the in the type, like the, the price in euros has a negative correlation with company. You see. Yeah? The 0 0.140 is a negative correlation. And the operating system has a negative correlation with company. You see. So it means that the higher the, the higher the, the other feature, the lower this other feature. But that, that kind of correlation, like an inverse correlation. And as, I, as we go further, we have the box plot. And the box plot is a graphical orientation of statistical data based on the minimum, first quarter, median, third quarter, and maximum. And this is used in statistics to graphically display various parameters at a glance. And in the box plot, the median, the interquartile range, and the outliers can be raised, as you're going to see in the, in the diagram I'm going to show you uh, in the next slide. And the data must be having metric cell level, which is measured in quantitative characteristics and variables. And as I have told you, this is the box plot. But this is drawn horizontal and horizontal scale. There are some box plots that are drawn vertically, facing upwards, but this is drawn on a horizontal scale. And it has uh, this line you can see in the middle of each box is, uh, is what we call the median. The median. And then this is uh, the first line before the box is what we call the lower quarter or the first quarter. Then the, the last line, uh, you can see, we also call them whiskers, by the way, the whiskers before these other box. It is called the, the upper quarter. So the range, that's the interquartile range, which is the median, that's the lower quarter, and that's the upper quarter. And these are called whiskers. These two lines you see uh, extrapolated from the one, from the boxes, and you can see the call uh, the visualization of this box plot. And yeah, that's it. And when you go to the feature independence plot, uh, it says that this is a representation of how the different features in the data given. As we like to be used late and change as a result of the change in the other. What do I mean by this? We have different graphs right now. These are histograms and they show the feature dependence. How the company depends on the screen resolution, how the product depends on the CPU, how the type name depends on the RAM, like different features depending on each other. This is what it shows. So the, as you can hear, the name that feature independence it only shows how different features depend on each other. Or to use the, the maximum results. Model. We have the outlier plots, and this is the value that lies in both extremes of the data. This is always visualized by the box plot where the outliers are the points that extremely appear in the far extreme from the whiskers of the plot. I told you in the box plot we have those whiskers, but then these outliers either appear on the far extreme of those whiskers, either the lower the lower whisker or the upper whisker, and these points are always outside the whiskers of the box plot. And a positive skew occurs when the data set contains values much greater than the mean. Um, the mean is always in, within the box. And then the while the negative skew always occurs when the data set contains values much less than the mean. And as I'm going to show you, show you these are the outlier plots, these are the outlier. They are always extrapolated from the whisker. But in this case of the laptop price prediction model, um, the whisker we only have the positive skew. Positive skew as I told you, the positive. Because we only have the values that are always much greater than the mean. That's why they are on the right hand side. So if I told this this heat map, the, the this box plot was drawn vertically, it would be on the upper side of the box plot. But here we have them on the right hand side, not the left hand side. So we only have positive skews of outliers. Um, we have the, the illustration of the patterns of interest, and this is uh, illustrated by the scatter plots. As you can see here, we have uh, this, the illustration of the interest, like patterns of interest between the price in euros and the CPU. We have the price in euros and the screen, whereby the price in euros and the CPU has a positive pattern, has a positive flow, like it, like it is a like positive, like positive gradient. While this uh, the price in euros and the screen resolution has a negative, because as we are moving from the left to the right, 
is a negative slope, which is a negative. Now, uh, the exploration and data cleaning, uh, this thing that my data set does not need any of this feature only because this has any over use. And the major aim of us doing this is to always remove these unnecessary values and null values from the data set that may cause noise and sometimes can cause, can cause inaccuracy. So, training the model, like testing and budgeting the model for the data set. And as a result, that, uh, my data set has all columns for classification and rows too. So, we don't need this feature of data cleaning. Oh, I don't, need, I don't have any unnecessary values for us to clean the data. Now we have the data splitting into training, testing, and validation. Yeah, but data splitting is normally done to avoid overfitting of the model. We split the data into the training and testing sets to evaluate how well our machine learning models perform. This is done under supervised learning technique. And as I told you, supervised learning technique is a technique whereby you have some data to train the model. This is some previously used data. Train the model, so it is there. So for it, the, the, the work of the model is to learn from this training. And as a result, we, well, like of this, we already have in the data used to train the model so that it can help us predict the accuracy and evaluate the model. And this is my code that shows, as I told you, I used the running forest regressor to treat the model. And the running forest regressor uh, is a provided algorithm that uses the symbol learning in. Um, in method or in like, uh, it is a disassemble learning method for regression. And as you can see, we have the training data. So the training we do like we have we're going to split our data set into the training, the testing, and then the validation. And at this point, where where you can see the seventy six is where we split our data into the training and the testing and the testing fields. So we moved. We, we fitted our model where we imported the SK disassemble report. Random first regress, or we are importing our model. Then, after we created a variable that can help us to teach our model, for us to be able to train our model. So, we use the random first regress as a code to teach our model. And afterwards, we had to print our accuracy, whereby we use this code of first to explore and the X train, Y train, give us that accuracy. And then we have this one also give us that accuracy. And that's all about our model. That we use. We used to train for each this laptop for its predictor model. And as I've told you, I'm still not Trevor. I really appreciate I can request for you guys to kindly subscribe, continue liking and sharing my videos. I appreciate. Thank you.